So let's talk about the tools we'll use to carve our spoons. The first tool is, is the uh, sloyd knife. And uh, the word sloyd refers to craft in Swedish. And it's the knife we use typically to do all kinds of general work. Uh, but in spoon carving, it's, uh, it's the main tool. It has a long tapered blade um, for, for getting into tight spots and, and also wide here to do um, powerful wasting grips. The other tool we'll need is the uh, spoon hook or hook tool. Um, these are also known as uh, crook knives, um, but uh, generally they're hook knives. And uh, you can see it has a curved blade that, that matches the spoon shape. It's sharpened on one side, um, but they can be sharpened on two sides. Um, um, this one, this one's sharpened on one. And then what I have here is um, a custom made knife that I built. Um, it's a larger hook uh, made for for finish cuts. And here's another small sloyd knife. Also just as useful as the long one. Sometimes you want a smaller knife to, uh, to do even finer work where the long knife uh, kind of gets in the way and you can risk getting cut. The main uh, the main roughing tool is, is our axe. Um, this is a, a handmade axe, but any hardware store axe will do the job. Um, it just has to be sharp um, and, and you know, a fairly short handle. And one of the crudest tools, but very necessary is, is the club. We use this for for um, splitting, splitting our blanks. So for carving a good spoon, we need to pick good materials. Um, there's basically two choices. There's straight wood and, and, and crooked wood. And I have a, a, a piece of birch here that's split out of a larger, a larger tree. Um, and you can see there's there's always knots, so we have to work around it. Um, but birch is a good wood because it's, uh, it's straight grained, uh, strong and light, not too hard, not too soft. Um, here's a piece of cherry. And for crooked wood, it becomes a little bit more of a challenge, but we can carve a spoon that follows the, the fiber and um, we can make a, a stronger spoon. Other good woods are maple, um, the, the, uh, the diffuse porous trees, whereas the open porous trees like oak and ash aren't so good. Um, they're prone to splitting and um, they tend to be problematic when you're carving with hand tools. So apple, fruit woods, uh, cherry, birch, maple, uh, the soft maples, but even lilac, um, buckthorn, um, those are all good spoon carving woods. The main type of wood we like to use when we're carving spoons is, is green wood. Um, the, the wood is soft and supple and under the knife and axe we can, we can carve it easily and efficiently. Um, when the wood is hard and dry, it's really hard on our tools. It's also um, it's hard on our bodies to carve. We're using simple tools, axe and knife, so we want to have um, all the advantages that we can gain. And so greenwood is, is really what we want to what we want to use. Greenwood is trees that that's fresh, uh, freshly felled. Um, we go out and uh, into the forest, we pick our materials, we look for um, you know straight wood or crooked wood um, with our project in mind and um, you know, fell the tree, and when it's fresh, then we, we take it back and we work it with simple tools. Some trees will last longer when their when they're wind falls. Um, birch, in particular, 
with its bark um, will, will rot from the inside out. So some trees you have to be careful of when you, uh, when you harvest um, and store that, that they don't rot. But other, otherwise, um, drying is the real problem. So keeping them longer lengths and um, stored close to the ground in the shade helps to keep things moist longer. Um, the other thing is to cut them uh, spoon blanks and then put them in the freezer, wrap them in a plastic bag and put them in the freezer. That's another good way of, uh, of storing green wood, especially for spoons. Um, larger projects, obviously, that's a little bit more problem problematic. So you can get green wood. Uh, if you're living in the city, there's uh, tree trimmers um, that you can go and, and try to d develop a relationship with, and um, try to you know try to work with them to get to get limb wood. Um, there's also municipal waste areas that usually you can, you can frequent and, and pick up bits and pieces here and there. Or if you live in the forest or know people with, that are landowners, of course you could ask them to harvest wood.